If you really want to improve the quality of your Zoom calls, take it to the next level. Go from looking and sounding like this to, to well, looking like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can hook up a DLSR camera so you can say, bye bye, poor quality webcam. Hello, professional presentation. There are two ways to hook up a DLSR camera for use with Zoom or Microsoft Team calls, even webinars. You can connect it by HDMI or you can use USB. My preferred method is HDMI. I think the, the quality is better, but even USB is going to be a million times better than using one of those cheap webcams. But not all cameras will work with HDMI, even if it's got an HDMI port. You see, some cameras, they don't output what's called clean HDMI. So what's clean HDMI? Some cameras they leave all the icons, menus, focus box, and all that kind of stuff on the feed. Not really a good look. With clean HDMI, all you get is the video and nothing else. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is some cameras, they've got a cut off after 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you've got to restart the camera. Again, not good. So how do you know which cameras will work with HDMI and if it's going to shut off after 30 minutes? Well, Elgato has a list on their website and I'll put a link below. It shows you if your camera is suitable for live videos. Now, it's a really good idea to check this list before you buy a camera. Anyway, let's get to setting things up. I'll show you how to connect your camera via HDMI and then I'll show you how to connect it via USB. To connect via HDMI, you're going to need an HDMI to USB converter like this. You plug it into one of the USB ports on your computer and then you plug in an HDMI cable from your camera into the other end. Now, there are a few different makes when it comes to HDMI converters. For a couple of years now, I've been using one from Elgato and I like it. It costs just over a hundred bucks. But recently, I've been testing much cheaper alternatives like this one. <laughs> this was less than 20 bucks. Now, I'll be honest, I expected it to be rubbish, but so far it's, it's worked without an itch. Anyway, to connect your camera via HDMI, you're going to need a converter like the one I've just shown. And of course, you're going to need an HDMI cable to connect your camera to the converter. Now, there are three different HDMI sockets on cameras. You've got a full size HDMI, and then there's a mini HDMI, and then there's a micro HDMI. Now, micro HDMI is probably the most common, but you want to check first. And when you've got your converter and your cable, you just plug the converter into your computer and then connect the cable to the converter and to the camera. And that's it, you're connected. So if I now open up Zoom and then I'll open up the preferences here on the video, I can select the cam link. That's the camera that's coming in via HDMI. Now, some cameras, for example, some of the Sony and some of the Panasonic cameras also send audio via HDMI. And if they do, if you click on the audio tab, you can see I can also opt to use the cam link for the audio. Now, if you don't see the cam link listed under audio, that's because your camera's not sending audio over HDMI. Now, if your camera doesn't send the audio via HDMI, or maybe you want to use a different mic, say a USB mic, that's totally fine. You just select your plugged in mic from the list as your audio source. And that's it. You're now set up using HDMI. Now, if you go in the USB route of connecting your camera, and I've got to say this is a Mac only solution. You're going to want to install Ecamm. Now, Ecamm is actually a really cool application. In fact, it's so much more than just a way to connect your camera. It's a full suite of tools that makes it really easy to deliver really polished presentations. And I'll put a link below with a free, no credit card required trial if you want to check it out. First thing, if you're connecting via USB, is to find out if your camera is compatible with Ecamm for connecting via USB. If you head over to the Ecamm website, and I'll put a link below so you can check the Ecamm website, it lists all the cameras you can connect to via USB. And this list is growing all the time. So assuming your camera is compatible, and most common cameras are, you'll want to connect a USB lead to your camera. Now, just a quick word on USB cables because this one can really catch you out. Some USB cables, they're for charging only and they don't carry data. So if you've followed the instructions and you've, you've restarted your camera and you've restarted your computer and it's still not working, 
there's a chance that the cable you're using is not suitable. So make sure you get a USB cable that can carry data. Anyway, you connect the USB cable to your camera and then plug the other end into your computer. Now, it's always a good idea to plug it directly into your computer and not into a hub. Once you've cabled up your camera, it's now time to start Ecamm. So I'll just switch over to my Ecamm setup. Right, so I'm in Ecamm and I've got my cameras connected. If I come over here under the camera tab, this is where it lists the cameras that are currently connected to this computer. I've got the Camlink 4K and that's HDMI that's currently connected to the GH5. That's what's filming me now. And then underneath that, I've got a Sony A6400, which is connected via USB. We'll leave it on the Camlink 4K for the time being. Now, just to explain what's going to happen here, everything in this window, this is the main camera, this is what, what Ecamm is currently capturing. Everything in this main window, this is what Ecamm is going to send out as the virtual camera. But first, we've got to set up the virtual camera. Now, just to think, the virtual camera is an Ecamm Pro feature. So for this to work, you're going to need Ecamm Pro. Anyway, let's set it up. We'll go to Output, come down to Virtual Camera, click Install Virtual Camera. Now we've got to put in our password, and this is the password for your computer, not your password for Ecamm. We'll click OK. We'll click OK and accept that. Now, if I come back up to Output, come back down to Virtual Camera, there we are. The Virtual Camera is now on and it's running. So what we've got to do now is jump over to Zoom and get everything set up. Next, I'll open up Zoom and from the menu, I'll open Preferences. I'll select Video from the left hand side. And now I can select the Ecamm Virtual Camera. As far as Zoom's concerned, this is just a webcam. And that's the video sorted. Now, when it comes to audio with the virtual camera, Ecamm doesn't pass any audio at all over the virtual camera. So you've got to either use a separate mic and then select it from the audio option here, or you could use a program called Loopback to create a virtual mic and then bring the audio in that way. And I'll be covering that in another video. So that's it. That's how easy it is to set up a camera and take your Zoom presentations to the next level. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. But until next time, bye for now.